Hello, friends. This is Pastor Daniel McKee. I'm so glad you tuned in to our weekly devotional. I want to pick up in our series titled The Haunted House. And we've been talking about fear. We've talked about the fear to speak. And today I want to talk to you about the fear of intimacy. Next week, I'll finish up by talking about the fear of man, the fear of man. So let's let's get right in to this particular teaching. Our key text is 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says this, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. Another translation says self-discipline, okay? So fear doesn't come from God, okay? God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so uh, let's talk about the fear of intimacy in your life. I'm going to give you a couple root causes, some key thoughts, and some uh, practical ways on how to get free. I first wanted to tell you just a a little story about uh, dealing with fear. One of the things that you and I need to understand is that dealing with the spirit of fear or dealing with fear in our life isn't a one-time occurrence. It's something that you consistently have to contend for. I don't know what uh, causes you to get uptight or fearful. One of my uh, fears is the fear of the dentist office. I do not like going to the dentist, okay? So I've been online for a year or two and and sometimes I watch my videos and I have this snaggle tooth that that sticks up above all the rest of my teeth and so I finally got sick of looking at the snaggle tooth and in my videos and I was like I need to fix this I need to address this situation so I made an appointment with my dentist and took all that I have to go to my dentist office and I get in there and he says okay here's what we can do we can just saw that tooth down so it's even with all the other teeth and man I just didn't like the thought of him sawing my tooth I don't know about you but that just did not sit well with me but I knew I needed to do it and so I made an appointment and then I came back to the dentist office and man I was I, man I was just having a hard time I'm sitting in the chair he's getting all his tools out I'm like this thing could go wrong what if he hits a nerve what if my tooth cracks I don't know man and so he begins to he begins to address my tooth issue and begins to saw the snaggle tooth, trim the snaggle tooth. And I felt absolutely no pain, but I kept telling the doc, I was like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? And finally he says, hey, listen, if you keep talking, I'm going to saw your tongue. You need to be quiet. And so five minutes later, he finishes the procedure and he puts a little bit of sealant on there. And, and I, you know, I'm hyperventilating. I'm, I'm, I make it a little bit drastic, but I'm, I'm having a hard time. I'm so relieved that this procedure is finally done, you know, and so I look in the mirror, you know, here you go, my snaggle tooth is gone, and as I was walking out to pay, uh, I I looked at the dentist, and I said, man, I sure made a big deal about that, and it it didn't even hurt, and it only cost me $35, and the dentist says something to me that's stuck, and maybe it will stick with you uh, today. He says, you sure, you, you might, you might I think you overthink things too much. And I said, yeah, you know what? You're right. And I wonder how much of my propensity to overthink things when I'm facing a fear in my life has cost me something. You know, I'm just talking about a tooth that got trimmed, but how many God moments have I missed because I have been uh, unwilling to face a fear in my life and I've allowed my, my, my mind to wander and to overthink a situation to the point where I've been robbed from something that God wants to release in my life. So one of my first encouragements encouragements in this particular teaching is that you need to keep facing your fears um, in the power of Jesus. Like it's not just a one-time occurrence. There is a spirit of fear that is is prevalent in our society. We are a fear-based society and so we're consistently having to face those fears. And I just want to encourage you, keep facing those fears. Stop overthinking it because God wants to do something great and grand in your your life and don't allow that fear to keep you from what God has called you to do in this earth, all right? So let me give you some root issues uh, dealing with the fear of intimacy. And this is a big fear that we all face um, in our lives. And so here's some root issues. First one is this, it's a fear of being rejected. 
The fear of intimacy takes root in our lives because we're, we have a fear of being rejected. Maybe you weren't picked for, on the basketball team or the cheerleading team, or you weren't picked by, by somebody, or somebody broke your heart um, and you were rejected. And instead of processing those emotions at the time, you, you stuff them in this fear of being rejected began to build a wall in your life. And so the fear of intimacy causes us to separate ourselves from other people. And so you need to be conscious that the fear of intimacy is a real thing. And the root issue is, is rejection, unresolved feelings and rejection, unresolved pain, and the fear of losing control. And so the fear of intimacy, the root issues there uh, are from within, not from the outside. It's more that they're, they're, the problem is on the inside. And so we need to be conscious of the root issues of the fear of intimacy because it gives us wisdom on how to break free from this particular issue. So let me give you a few uh, key thoughts in, uh, concerning the, key, uh, the fear of intimacy. First one is this, the fear of intimacy is directly related to trust issues. Your ability to trust is directly related to the measure of the fear of intimacy you have in your life. If trust has been broken, trust has been fractured, then you are dealing, uh, probably dealing with the fear of intimacy. Number two, the fear of intimacy stems from issues within. The issue is within. The fear of intimacy comes from something that, that is happening on the inside. Some, some people like to blame everybody on the outside when in all actuality, if we would be authentic and real, the problem is on the inside, not on the outside. And so the fear of intimacy is something that needs to be addressed inwardly, not outwardly. I hope uh, that makes sense to you. Number three, the fear of intimacy bypasses logic and reason. I found fear does this, doesn't it? You know, when, when you are gripped with fear, you do things that don't, just don't make sense. And so the fear of intimacy is is bypasses logic and reason. So people will do things, you will do things, I will do things because of the fear of intimacy that we wouldn't normally do, that don't make sense. And so we need to we need to be prepared for or understand that that the because the fear of intimacy is such an inward work in our lives that it works through our subconscious and we end up doing things that we do not uh, want to do. All right. And then finally the fear of intimacy leads to self-sabotaging behavior. This one is a warning for you and for me. Uh, if you continue to go down the track of the fear of intimacy, it not only uh, fractures your relationship with you and Jesus, and I'll get to that in, in just a moment, but it causes you to do uh, self-sabotaging behavior in your life. Matter of fact, the research I've done to this is, is it leads to suicide, it leads to depression, it leads to anxiety, it leads to substance abuse. It leads to compromise. It leads you down to paths that are self-sabotaging because here's what happens. Since the fear of intimacy bypasses logic and reason, then we begin to we begin to act in ways that are just don't make sense. And we end up destroying the relationships around us. And so we can have a relationship that begins to develop. And I'm not just talking about relationship between a man and a woman. I'm talking about relationship, intimate relationship with people around you. You know, intimacy is not just sex. Intimacy goes farther than that. You know, we need to be intimate with one another and build relationships. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a, 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 a sexual situation that that uh, that uh, produces the fear of intimacy. It, it it's so much deeper than that. And so what happens is is that if we if we don't address the issues within, we develop these self-sabotaging uh, activities to push everybody away in our lives. And we wonder sometimes, why don't I have any friends or why doesn't anybody like me? And we, we don't understand that we, subconsciously, because we have, we have bought into the fear of intimacy, we're actually pushing people away. We're sabotaging good relationships because we're trying to protect ourselves from being hurt from being rejected. And so it's a it's a serious thing. It's a it's a real 
thing. Um, and so be conscious that those are kind of some key thoughts about what the fear of intimacy uh, will cost you. Now, let me give you some practical ways on how to get free from the fear of intimacy. First one is this, pay attention to your relationship patterns. I mean, one of the things that I try to encourage people uh, to um, apply to their life is, is self-assessment. Where am I at? What are the kind of patterns that are happening in your life? And you need to examine your relationship patterns. What are, what, what are, what are, your, uh, what are the friends around you like? And, and what's your pattern of developing friendships? Is it something that's hard for you? If it's, is it easy for you? Is it fractured? Is it skewed? How, what are the patterns in your life? Because if you don't get to the point where you're challenging patterns, toxic patterns in your life, you're going to have a hard time getting free. And so we need to pay attention to, you know, uh, I always say this statement, if, if um, you think everything is everybody else's fault, then the fault is not everybody else. It's probably in, within you. And I don't know that's, that's tough. Maybe you don't know me well, but I mean, hear my heart here. I mean, if everybody around you is, is always wrong, then what's wrong is probably something inside you. And so you need, you and I need to challenge those relationship patterns in our lives, at least be conscious and aware of those things. And maybe we have a propensity or a bent towards a certain toxic behavior that we need to be cautious of. So number one, pay attention to your relationship patterns. And number two, Jesus embodies the characteristics that foster perfect intimacy. Now, look, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. If there was someone on planet earth that you and I needed to contend to be intimate with, it's the person of Jesus. He's perfect in every way. He's long-suffering. He has uh, unconditional love. He's compassion. He, compassionate. He's forgiven. He's value. He, he has value for people. He's unselfish. He's truthful. He's understanding. He's patient. He's helpful, right? And so Jesus gives us the pattern, the relationship pattern uh, that we can then begin to model. But here, here's the deal. If you're not intimate with Jesus, then it's going to cause you to have a fractured and skewed sense of what a relationship is supposed to look like. But as you learn and discern how to be intimate with King Jesus, then see, you begin to understand what, what, what matrix are in a relationship. And so drawing near to Jesus will help you navigate in your life the relationships around you. As you draw close to Jesus, you will grow in compassion, in love, in long-suffering, in patience. And then that, that, that when you receive that from the king, then you're able to provide that for those relationships around you. But sometimes we're so fearful of intimate relationship with Jesus because we don't want to, see, we, we, we feel like we, we either don't want to be rejected or we don't want to show him who we really are, but he already knows. And so my encouragement to you is to, is to begin to uh, ask the Lord, how do I become more intimate in my relationship with you? I know I'm running out of time here, but I'll just share this, this personal thought as, as far as my relationship is with Jesus. It's grown over the years. You know, I, I like things that blow up. I like action movies. I like talking about the conquering king and and how Jesus is going to come down and, and, and man, there's going to be this huge battle and all that stuff is scripture and all that, kind, all that stuff is true. But I'll tell you where I've grown most of my life is intimate times in fellowship with the Lord. It's worshiping and praying and just loving on Jesus. And, and so, especially as men, it's hard for us to kind of make that transition to say, hey, look, man, I need to be real and authentic and intimate with King Jesus. And if you will, if you'll just go, down that road uh, and, and say, hey, teach me how, how to develop and foster an intimate relationship with Jesus. He will, he will open up the heavens and give you the wisdom to do stuff. And finally, uh, prioritize time with Jesus. You need to put him center in your life. If it's not on your calendar, it needs to get there. Be honest, transparent, truthful, and vulnerable with King Jesus. I hope you got something out of this devotional today. I'll pop on next week and talk to you about the fear man. Until then, peace out. God bless you.